Okay, hello everybody. This video is going to serve as an addendum to our MSc 100 um, course discussion on true positional tolerance. So this is part of the MSc 100 in the School of Mechatronic Systems Engineering at Simon Fraser University. So let's start by defining what a true position is. It is basically kind of a tolerance on the true location of axes of cylindrical holes and pegs related to reference surfaces. So typically the symbol looks like what is shown below. So you have the symbol over here, which looks like a bullseye. And then you have a diameter symbol and then the tolerance value and then followed by M within a circle, followed by the letters A, B and C here. Um, the bullseye is the actual symbol for the true positional tolerance, uh, which basically kind of says, okay, look at the axis of the hole or a peg. And that's what it means. The next, what we define is an infinite cylinder of diameter 0 0.05 within which we want to bound the axis. The letter M basically denotes that we are only going to enforce this tolerance at the MMC condition. So typically the hole itself might have a dimensional range, for instance, 10 plus minus 0.1, which basically means that the hole, each cross section of the hole can change between 10 minus 0.1, which is 9.9, .9, to 10 plus 0.1, which is 10.1. So we basically say we're enforcing the hole uh, condition only at the MMC which corresponds to the smallest hole which is when material in the hole is a maximum. And then the three letters A, B and C denote the reference surface with which we are going to construct or restrict our axis. So A by the way is typically chosen to be perpendicular to the axis of the hole or the peg and the order of the second and third reference B and C is not, not that important so you can kind of swap them out. But typically the first reference here uh, needs to be um, needs to be a surface which defines the normal um, the normal of, to the surface to define the axis of the hole. So this is kind of continuation or uh, refreshing of the exercise we did in class. So assume we have these three cylindrical surfaces. This is peg uh, three pegs, and then this is kind of the top view. Assume we haven't shown the references, but there is a reference bottom surface over here maybe the bottom of the screen, and then you have another surface over here, and then there is another surface kind of back into the monitor. Uh, assume somehow somebody is giving you these three pieces. These are not shown the support. Assume these are like multiple instances of the same object or multiple uh, samples of the same object, and then you're like left scratching your head trying to figure out how the part actually looks in terms of the tolerancing of the dimension and the geometry. So as every true engineer, we're going to try to fit some curves to this and then kind of uh, measure out our tolerances from there. Uh, so it's, we could potentially put like a million lines here, try to find the center point of each of these axes, by the way, or each of this is a cylinder, and then try to join that. What we're going to do is kind of pick uh, five points, so one on each end and then three points in the middle like so. And then we mark off the center. So this has hash is kind of denoting the center of this so on and so forth and the red here is just used to determine the line that i've drawn and then i basically typically measure this you can use a ruler if you want so at this point you can pause the video use the ruler and then note down the value the only point um, the scale might be a little bit off um, so this length if you want to measure is going to be 20 millimeters so if you do that you get this particular shape um, and then what you can do is denote or note down the range in which the dimensions or this width actually changes. For the cylinder peg number one, the range is basically 20 to 20. The second one goes from 22.75 right here. It decreases and around here it's about it's 17.5. This one is 20 all the way, just that it kind of twists a little bit. It's kind of stretching out doing some yoga. And then here, basically the top surface is 22.5. And then this is, you measure, be a little bit smaller. If you measure, it'll be around 20. And then right here, this is going to be 17.5. So essentially here, the cross section kind of changes. So this is a little bit larger, smaller. Cross section decreases, but then this is kind of bending one side and the other. The final one, number five, each cross section, if you measure, you'll notice it's actually 22.5 millimeters. Now the next step is to basically draw a center axis line through the center points that we determined. So if this line is going to be straight, so is this one. If you draw a curve, 
So to pass through this, you get this shape and same way with here and here. Fairly straightforward. So we are basically saying, or rather decoupling the effect of the dimensional change or the dimensional variance from the geometric variation between the parts. So once we do that, we try to bound the axis within a cylinder, uh, typically the smallest cylinder. So ideally what you would need to do is draw the cylinder relative to your reference surface and related to the true location of the hole given by the basic dimensional value. In this case, we're just going to try to bound the axis uh, and then see what happens. So if we do this, you get two lines. This is the gap. So this same way you do with this guy, draw one line here, one line here, bound the axis, same way with here. The dotted line basically kind of shows you the boundary. Keep in mind, uh, this is basically going to be a 2D shape. Uh, this is actually going to represent a cylinder coming out of the plane and then potentially you could have a part which is kind of twisted in into the screen or out of the screen as well. Obviously, I can't represent that unless I'm doing a 3D video, which is probably where we'll get eventually to. Uh, I've denoted the geometric tolerance using the letters GT. So if we would actually measure this using a proportional scale, you would notice that this will be five millimeters so is this and so is this part. So I kind of just deleted the first, which is not like super important or kind of doesn't give you as much interesting information. So if you look at the actual dimensional range, so with being all the parts, since everything is the same, the range is basically 17.5 to 22.5 millimeters. This we can basically represent it as being 20 plus minus 2.5. So this would be the dimensional dimension with the tolerance you would put for that particular hole. Or you would assume that the designer had actually maybe intended to put these particular values. The next one is the geometric tolerance. So you notice that the tolerance on this is going to be the true positional tolerance on the axis. Since we can bound the axis within a cylinder of five millimeters, the geometric range is five millimeters. Again, keep in mind, these values are super exaggerated. You wouldn't have a 10% tolerance of the dimension. And in this case, 25% uh, tolerance on the uh, on the geometry. So typically these values would be significantly smaller. Unfortunately, if you did that, you wouldn't be able to actually measure these and then kind of get an idea of the actual geometric tolerance. Coming back, so what does the cylinders actually represent? So the first one would be the ideal case. There is no variation in the geometry. It's completely straight and the cross section is fairly even uniform at 20 millimeters. The second one, it has no geometric variation. So it's perfectly straight, but it has only dimensional change. The third one has this ideal dimension all through, but then it has a geometric tolerance. So essentially the axis is bent a little bit. The uh, fourth one uh, over here, the variation in the dimension is between 17.5 to 22.5 and then a geometric tolerance of five millimeters. So you get kind of get this interesting shape over here. And the fifth one, if you look at it, every cross section is at the maximum cross section allowable. So essentially this is the case where all cross sections have been made the largest possible within the allowable tolerance. And it, in addition, has a geometric tolerance associated with it. Keep in mind, we are actually doing the exercise the other way around. Uh, what will usually happen is as a designer, you provide a dimensional range. So you'd say maybe you want the diameter to be 20 plus minus 0.1 or 20 plus minus 0.5, based whatever your application is. And then you would say, I want a geometric tolerance. Typically, the geometric tolerance would be an order of magnitude smaller. And then you can say, okay, I want it uh, either a true position or if you wanted a cylindricity, circularity, whatever you may have. And then you might give a tolerance of say 0 0.005 or 0 0.002, something, something like that. So once you do that, you get these particular shapes, obviously they'll be much tighter. And then you can kind of do the same analysis the other way around. So you basically take, measure all of these parts and then figure out if everything is within your spec that you specify. So we're going to look at the concept of why we typically enforce the um, geometric tolerance at the maximum material condition. So we're going to examine just the last two. If you take a look at these, because that seems to be the worst case scenario. Uh, so what we do is kind of bring this up a little bit, zoom a little bit. And then what we're going to do is try to find 
a bounding cylinder that will completely enclose both these parts. So I'm going to start by creating a bounding cylinder. So these dotted lines assume represents a cylinder. Obviously, you're going to have a circular here, circular here. So since it's going to be a 3D, it's going to be kind of revolved out of the plane. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see what happens if you move it to the other, other piece. So notice that the number four, in this case, the one to the left, completely fits inside the box that would be needed to fit number five. So what does it mean? Basically, number five is the worst possible case of all pegs that you can actually create within the given tolerance range. So basically, all the cross section is at the maximum. And what is also happening is that the geometric tolerance or the, the maximum geometric variation as well. So what you're going to do is drop everything else and then consider only number five, which in case is this guy on the right. And then you're going to take a look at this and then see what happens. So I've drawn a line here, which shows kind of the diameter over here. Um, this is going to be 22.5. And then I have drawn a little bit smaller line, which fits right inside the uh, geometric tolerance. And then let's see what happens. Notice that I can actually move these lines. The bounding cylinder that I need to completely enclose this object is given by the MMC diameter of the cylinder plus the geometric tolerance, right? So the reason we are saying I'm saying the MMC diameter of the cylinder is that because all of these cross sections are at the maximum material condition value for a cylinder that happens to be the maximum diameter. Now we're going to kind of look what happens if we were designing the hole, which is going to be the mating part for the cylinder we looked at. So I assume this is a cylinder that somebody created for you. So or rather a cylindrical hole. So this is a box. The cylinder, obviously, it's kind of like ziggy zaggy. Um, assume maybe the guy who was machining it got a little bit drunk and started shaking the machine. Whatever you may have, right? So this is the cylinder that is created. And then what we're going to do is essentially look at different cross sections of the cylinder. So the center point of these axes can potentially vary. And then we're going to assume that each cross section is at already at the MMC value, which for a hole is going to be the smallest hole possible. So since it's varying, so I'm going to pick the first cross section shown by this red dotted box. Uh, we pick another cross section, we move a little bit up. So the cylinder moves in one direction, move a little bit further up, the cylinder has moved in the other way. All the while, the center point marked by this plus or a cross is on this gray little circle. This gray little circle kind of would give you the tolerance diameter which is the allowable tolerance diameter on the geometry of the hole. So we keep going up. So I've designed it such that all of the center lines lie on or within this gray cylinder. So I keep doing that. And then once I do that, kind of sweep all the way up, I get a profile that looks like this. All the red uh, X's or the red plus marks denote the center point of all of these cylinders, or in this case, all of these circles. So once you do that, we're going to try to see what is the largest inscribed circle. So what do, what does the largest inscribed circle give you? So if I can inscribe a circle here, and then it's going to be an infinite circle, that's going to give you the inner bounding surface for our hole. So there cannot be a hole within this tolerance, which is going to be smaller than that particular surface. So we start with the circle. Obviously, this is not the largest circle. This is in and inscribed circle, so we make it larger and larger. So we make it larger and larger till it hits here, this way larger till it hits here, and so on and so forth. If you do that, you can just about make out this blue circle over here. So I kind of move my mouse over there. And then what this does is this corresponds to the bounding box or the bounding surface for our mating part. So let's move these two out. Notice that this blue circle which represents the inner bounding box, fits inside the 50 millimeter circle. This is this one. Basically, I pulled one of these circles out. And this gray little circle denoting the true positional tolerance here. So what does that mean for me? It basically means that the diameter of this blue circle is given by the diameter of the MMC hole less or subtracted, uh, subtracted um, the diameter of the geometric torque, or rather 
the diameter of this blue circle which represents the um, bounding surface on the inside is given by the MMC diameter of the hole minus the diameter of the geometric tolerance. Okay, so now we're going to use this information to try to come up with something. So assume you were making the hole first, typically that's what is done because hole is a little bit more restrictive. And then you have given a tolerance, obviously again, these tolerances are exaggerated. So assume the tolerance you've given is 0.5 millimeters on the dimension. So your actual size of the hole is 50 plus minus 0.5. And then assume that the geometric true position tolerance is uh, of diameter 0 0.5 millimeters. And then our question is, what is the size of the outer envelope for the mating part? So this would be the size of the inner envelope for the hole. Now, if the peg is to be dimensioned in the same format, in the form D plus minus 0.5, with a geometric true positional tolerance of 0.5, we want to figure out what is the maximum allowable value for D. Right? Again, so essentially you made a hole, uh, you have some tolerance, so the hole is kind of like is changing both in size as well as it's wiggling around. We already kind of know that if the hole becomes a little any larger, that's fine, it's not going to affect anything. So we're going to consider the first case possible, consider the MMC diameter of the hole, and then subtract the tolerance from it, which will give the diameter of the inner bound. So what's the MMC diameter for the hole? For the female part of hole, it's basically going to be the smallest hole, which in this case is going to be 15 minus 0.5, which gives you 49.5. You subtract the geometric tolerance to get the size of the mating part, which gives us 49.5 minus 0.5, which gives us 49. So if for the peg is dimensioned the same way, uh, the MMC dimension of the peg is going to be uh, D plus 0.5. And then for the peg, notice that everything gets larger if there is a geometric variation. So you add the geometric tolerance. So essentially we need to equate 50 minus 0.5, which was the dimensional tolerance for the hole, minus 0.5 once more, which was the geometric tolerance for the hole. We need to equate that to D plus 0.5, which is the dimensional tolerance for the peg, plus another 0.5 for the geometric tolerance. So if we do all of that, we get D should be 49. So this is one way you could potentially use to calculate or use the information of dimensional geometric tolerance. And this is how it typically affects your part. Keep in mind that uh, geometric tolerance, since it's going to be much, much finer than the dimensional tolerance, in the grander scheme of things, uh, you're, you wouldn't, you're, you may not actually change the value of the dimensions to fit within the dimensional allowed. But if you go to very high tolerance values, then the geometric tolerance, or if you go to very high values of dimensional tolerance, um, then your geometric tolerance would start playing a larger effect. So this concludes our video, which kind of uh, gives you an overview for geometric uh, true positional tolerance and an idea of how and how this is going to affect your design. Thank you.